So you have an iPhone. Maybe you just bought the more recent iPhone 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, or just an iPhone 11. And what do you do now? Let me tell you that most people that own iPhones really don't use it to its full potential. But I'm gonna tell you right now, there are actually five things that every iPhone owner should be using their iPhone for. Now, of course, there's hundreds and there's thousands of more things you can do. These five alone will not only keep you more productive, help you through your day, be more uh, collaborative with your family and friends, but it's something that I think every iPhone owner should be using. Now, I'm only gonna give you five. If you want more than that, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll give you more uh, information about what else you can use your iPhone for and, and more uses and so forth. So to get down to it, if you have not seen my videos before, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you're notified when all my new videos come out. So when you get an iPhone, one of the main things, this is one of the main things that you should be using your iPhone for is your digital calendar. I cannot stress this enough. We all live by a schedule. Whether we'd like to admit it or not, we all live by a schedule. We have work schedules. We have online business schedules. We have events going on. We have our kids' activities going on. We all live by schedules. The traditional paper calendars and the write and erase calendars, that stuff is gone. Everything goes with the digital calendar. Now, there are thousands and thousands of digital calendar apps. The best one so far is going to be the default one. So in other words, the iOS calendar. Now, I know a lot of people don't like that. So, oh, it's not feature rich and all that. No, but it's reliable. Okay. Even though there are plenty of other calendars out there, a lot of calendar apps, the one that comes with your phone is the most reliable. So definitely on that one, you can create calendars for your Gmail accounts, for your iCloud account. You can share calendars with family and friends, which updates automatically. You can get reminders, do all that stuff. So your calendar is your number one one to use. Second on the list is going to be the notes app. Now I know there are tons and tons and tons of notes apps that you're going to find on the iPhone. There are thousands. The one that comes with the phone, the default iOS notes app is going to be fast. It's going to be quick. It's going to have scannable abilities. So you can scan documents in there. You can save URLs, which is web addresses. Uh, you can do so many things that most people are not utilizing it for. And the idea of having pen and paper, not most of us don't, I know I don't carry pen and paper with me everywhere, but my phone is with me and my notes app is right there. I can dictate it or I can write it, either one. So the notes app is very, very important. In fact, most of my YouTube notes and my Instagram notes are on the notes app. That's what I use it for. Next on the list is reminders. Now I know there's a lot of reminder apps out there. You can even use the calendar as your reminder if you want to. But the built-in reminders app, though somewhat reliable and reliable on the Apple Watch, does work. We all need to be reminded about things. Where do we need to go? What do we need to pick up? Who do we need to see? Those kind of things. We all need to be reminded. So to be reminded, and to have a notification on your phone is a very, very important thing to do. And the Reminders app for the iPhone has been updated. So it looks better, works better, works with URLs, uh, works with your emails and so forth. So the Reminders app is a very important thing to do because most of us are not gonna carry our, our sheets of paper with us and pens. And for what? <clears throat> we lose that, we lose our reminders. So the Reminders app is the third on the list that I think everyone should be using on their iPhone. Now this one, I recommend because now it's gonna depend on cell signal, but nowadays you think about it, when we pay data, we're usually, we have unlimited plans. So it's not gonna make much of a difference. You can download some offline ones where you have to download the stuff on the, on the device. But for this case and this scenario, the Maps app, the Apple Maps, the one that comes with the iPhones, 
is by far the fourth thing that I think everyone should be using for navigation. Yes, there are other free apps out there. Yes, there are other navigation apps out there, and there are a lot that you can download the maps in there as well. <clears throat> My second recommendation on the maps is also Google Maps, because Google Maps has a feature where you can check to see if locations or businesses are busy. So having <clears throat> the Apple Maps and Google Maps together as your navigation system is probably going to be your best bet. And that is the ones I recommend to use. Now, if your car comes with the CarPlay, which is the new system that most cars come with, Apple Maps is your best bet because you will get an on-screen display and everything of your maps. And I think that'll be your best way to navigate in cities, whether you know the city or not, or whether you need to find a location. <clears throat> the Apple Maps is your best bet for navigation. Last but not least is usually the one that most people cringe or I don't know if I should use it or whatever, or there's not many locations out there. And that is Apple Pay. Now let me explain something about Apple Pay. Apple Pay never reveals your identity and never reveals your credit card number. How many times have you had charges on your credit card bill that you have no clue where they came from and you've had to call and make disputes and so forth on there to get them fixed or change the card. I know I have many, many times. Using Apple Pay, whether it be the Apple card or whether it be your own credit card you scanned in, is your most, number one, I cannot show this the most, secure way to pay. And let me tell you that more and more and more locations are getting Apple Pay, even restaurants. So you want to get your most used credit cards on Apple Pay. That is going to be one of the things you want to do. If you're into the Apple Card and you're approved for that, use the Apple Card, preferably your iTunes purchase to get you 3%. But use Apple Pay, start using it. If you have an Apple Watch, it's even better, it's even easier, but use Apple Pay. Apple Pay will be your lifesaver when you are purchasing things. I understand a lot of locations do not have Apple Pay yet. Fine, you have to pull out the card, but every single location that has Apple Pay, I stress it enough, use your iPhone or Apple Watch and pay with Apple Pay. You will thank me for that when your card number is never stolen, when your identity is never stolen. Okay, Apple Pay is one of the features that every iPhone has that you need to be using. Those are the five things that I think everyone that owns an iPhone, whether it be an iPhone 8 on up, should be using on their iPhone today. Now, there are thousands and thousands of more apps out there I will come back with more videos and give you more information on those apps if that's what you want to see. If you have any questions on any of the apps, you have any questions on how to set these things up, please leave them in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, click that little bell notification so you're notified of all my new videos. And I hope this has helped you out and I hope as you get more and more iPhones as they come out, you know more of what you need to be using the iPhone 4 right off the bat. Okay? I thank you for coming and watching. I hope you learned something, and I will catch you later with more videos.